Hey guys, right, uh, this week then we're going to be looking at a new topic of linear graphs, linear meaning straight line, um, and obviously this will be a hell of a lot easier to teach you guys in school, um, but we're going to try our best to sort of break down the smaller parts of it for home learning. Um, you'll hopefully have a live lesson in the future where I'll go through the nuances of little bits in much more detail, but this should at least help you build up a lot of the smaller parts on Hegate before we get a chance for that live lesson. So I'm going to start off first with um, video 200 on Hegate. Now this is about finding the midpoint of a line section. Dead simple stuff. Um, all you need to really revise and recap on this one is how to find the mean of two numbers, whether they be positive, negative, or a mixture of both. It's very simple. Add them together, divide by two. Explains this in the Hegate video nicely, and hopefully this will be appearing in the bottom left of the screen right now. Um, so the first uh, question... I'm just going to run you through some examples of each one, basically, to try and make sure you're on track. So the first example we get in Hegarty Video 200 is find the midpoint of a line segment with end coordinates of 0, 2, and 8, 8. Now, I still recommend you absolutely watch the videos. I uh, can't stress this enough. It would save us teachers endless times typing out watch the videos in your feedback. Um, essentially, to find the midpoint of a line, you're adding two bits together and halving them. So for this example, if, if you imagine uh, a little grid here, and we've got the point, call this point A and this point B. If we've got the point 0, 2, just sketching it, and we've got 8, 8, it's a line segment, and we're looking for the midpoint of that line. So if we can work out the distance between the x coordinates and find halfway, we're going to get our midpoint coordinate. Uh, for the x, and if we can do the exact same, find the distance between the, y, the first y coordinate and the second y coordinate, and halve that, we're going to do exactly the same. So, for the x coordinate, 0 add 8 is 8, 8 divided by 2, 4. So this coordinate here would be 4. And on the y's, 2 add 8 is 10, halve it is 5, so it would be 5, and that would be 4 there. So the midpoint of this particular one of those two points of this line segment would be 4, 5. Uh, if we move on to when we get a mixture of negative numbers, um, and again, you can just go straight for the numbers on these. It can help to sketch these out. So the coordinates we've been given now, where was I, sorry, interrupted by the young one. All right, uh, so on the second example here, and I'm not going to go through all of them, but like I say, I'll just give an example, we'll be mixing some negative numbers in. So if our coordinate A this time is minus 2, minus 4, and coordinate B is 2, minus 10. Now again, you could go straight into just doing what I've done here with the numbers and write down your midpoint. That would be perfectly acceptable. Um, but for some people, it can help to just quickly sketch out. I often do this. I'm a very visual person, so I need sometimes a bit of a visual aid to help me. So I'll go, right, minus 2, minus 4, that's going to be somewhere in this quadrant. B is 2, minus 10, that's going to be somewhere down here. So I'm looking at a line segment like that. It just gives me some kind of visual guide to where I'm expecting this midpoint to be. Um, right then, so do what we did then on the letters, uh, on the numbers. So the x coordinates, you've got minus 2 and 2. If you add those together, you get nothing. So the midpoint is obviously half of nothing is still nothing. Focusing on the y coordinates. Minus 4, add minus 10. Be very, very careful. Don't make rookie mistakes with your negative numbers. That adds to minus 14. Half it, minus 7. So this coordinate here would be minus 7 uh, of our midpoint, and it's going to cross it. So I've not sketched it exactly, but it's enough to give me an idea. Um, again, hopefully, if you, for instance, this should be common sense checks here. If you made mistakes when you're adding negative numbers, let's say you did minus 4, and you added 10 instead of adding minus 10, and you came up with minus 6. Well, if you follow the method through at that point, you're going to half it and get to minus 3, which if you've sketched it, minus 3 is going to be above minus 4, so it should hopefully give you that indication that you're not in the right ballpark there. Uh, let's jump to the end then. Question 5. Yeah, this is an important one to run through. So <clears throat> same skill, but they can throw at you slightly differently in an exam where they're going to say, right, so if... The coordinate 4, 3 is one end of a line segment, ST. So that might be coordinate S, for instance, or it is. Uh, nope, that's the midpoint. Reread the question, right, sir. 
So if, and it's not even 4, 3, it's 4 minus 3. Wonderful live recording, eh? So if the midpoint of a line segment, ST, is the coordinates 4 minus 3. If S is 1, 5, we need to find T. Again, it may help. You don't have to, but it may help to sketch it. 4 minus 3. So we go right for 4, down for minus 3. That'll do there. That can be the midpoint. And then 1, 5. Well, 1's going to be there. 5's going to be much higher. So there's my S. So my line's going to go down. Remember, that's the midpoint, so it's going to keep on going down. So I'm going to be looking for something down here. So it should have a positive X value and a negative Y value. Let's see. Um, well, think about it. If that's the midpoint, S, the X coordinate of S, is to the left of that. So if I can figure out how far to the right it's gone to get to the midpoint, I'm just going to double that up again to get to the other side of the line segment. So from S, from 1 to 4, I've gone right 3. I'm going to go right 3 more from the midpoint again. So this has got to have an X coordinate of 7. Just recap, from S, where the X coordinate is 1, the midpoint is 4, therefore we've gone 3 to the right, so we're going to go 3 to the right again to get to the other end of the the straight line. Um, I'm going to do the same with the Y as well. So from S, which is up here at 5, we've gone down to minus 3. So we've gone down a total of 8. 5 and then further gone. This is what can help to draw you things. So we've gone down 8, so we're going to go down another 8 from the midpoint. And again, try and not make mistakes with your adding and subtracting negative numbers. Minus 3, take another 8. We're going to get minus 11 as our end of the line there. I'm going to pause it at this point and I'm going to try and scratch out and uh, we'll, we'll look at the next video I want to set you this week which is video 201. Alright, so Hegarty video 201, we're now looking at gradient of the line. So if you've not come across this word before, gradient uh, it basically just means the slope, the severity of the slope of the line. If we're going to be, and we are because we're top set, um, if we're going to be more specific, we're going to call it, it's, it's the change in Y over the change in X. So if you have two, uh, if you have coordinate X1, Y1 as your first coordinate of some section on a line, and you have another coordinate, and we'll call it X2 for the second X coordinate, and Y2 for the second Y coordinate, then our gradient would be defined as the change in Y, so y, the second coordinate, take away the first, so y2 minus y1, all divided by exact same with the x, the change in x, so we'll call it x2, minus the first one. What that looks like in reality is if we find the first question here on Hegarty, it gives us our first example question. It says, find the gradient of the line segment between the points 4, 3 and 5, 3. 7. So if I write it out in this full one, again, eventually you don't have to go for this, but we'll do it now. The change in Y, so our gradient, and the letter we use for gradient frustratingly is not G, it is M. Um, I've heard loads of fun things as to where the letter M comes from. Uh, someone suggested it's from the French word monter, which means climb in French. Um, but I don't buy that because the French actually use the letter A um, for gradient, which is weird. Um, I suspect it comes more down to M for modulus, which is something you don't have to be concerned about just yet. It's the squaring of numbers before adding them and then taking the positive square root. But moving on, on this one, uh, we're going to do our second Y, which is 7, minus the first Y, which is 3, over our, um, our second X coordinate of 5, minus our first coordinate of x, which is 4, and then just work it out. 7 minus 3 is 4, 5 take 4 is 1, so therefore this has a gradient of 4, 4 divided by 1. And that's all it is. You didn't have to draw all this out. You can, and I'll do it with the next one if we jump to the next one. Uh, in fact, let's give ourselves a, a negative one to play with. Uh, there we go. Let's go for question 5. So question five gives us the points. Again, find the gradient of the line segment between the points four minus six and minus six minus 16. You can write it out in full. Again, 
just be really careful. Double check before you submit your answers on Hegarty. Just double check you're working out with the negatives. Top sets make silly mistakes with negatives. Second Y coordinate minus the first Y coordinate. That's minus 16 subtract negative 6. Negative 16 subtract negative 6. When you subtract a negative, you are adding. So negative 16 add 6, essentially. That will give us negative 10. Okay. If you have to go back to one of your axes, if you've drawn yourself a Y axis and you've got these. Now on an exam, you'll get a Y axis. So you can always use it as a, a quick number line. There's no shame in needing it. Negative 16 subtract negative 6 is an addition of 6. So we get to negative 10. Now going to do the same with the X coordinates. Negative 6 subtract 4. Now this is you're already in debt 6 quid. If you owe someone 6 quid and then you subtract another 4, you're going to owe them 10 quid. So we're at minus 10 on that one. Negative 10 divided by negative 10 is 10 divided by 10 is 1. Negative divided by negative, positive 1. If you are really struggling with this, if you scroll to the bottom uh, when you're on uh, task 201, they do have these little pre-steps to go back and just refresh your mind, get some, get some confidence up, get your negative numbers correct. Um, do we have anything else more nasty on these ones? Um, yeah, when you get to question 7 onwards, it's going to give you pictures. Just pick two whole coordinates. So if I look at question 7, for instance, I'll try to squeeze it in here. Um, depending on how well you can see these lines here, look for where it gives you a nice coordinate where both X and Y are integers. So I'm going to pick the easiest one here of 0 minus 5. So question 7, 0 minus 5 is where it crosses there. And I'm going to go up to here, 2 minus 1. And that's the only difference. You've just got to draw your own coordinates from looking at the graph. And then it's exactly the same again. Change in Y. Min negative 1, subtract negative 5. Negative 1, subtract a negative is adding it. So negative 1, add 5 is positive 4. And then 2, take away 0, is still 2. 4 divided by 2, we have a gradient of 2. What does this mean? And I keep saying gradient so much. Now, gradient is the change in y over the change in x. It is essentially saying, how far are you going up if the gradient is positive? or down if the gradient is negative for every one unit that you go to the right on your graph. Um, so again, I'm going to pause it now. I'm going to load up video 202 for us. Oh my good. Right. Fold the sheet over because I realize I've got the he Hegarty video round about here. Um, right. Video 202, exactly the same skill that we just did last time for video 201. The only difference is now it's telling you you should be expecting negative answers as your gradient. So if we jump straight in the first question here, uh, it's telling us our coordinates are 0, 2, and the other coordinate is minus 2 and positive 10. I should really stop saying minus 2 as well. Um, we're going to do the exact same thing. Change in y, 10 subtract 2 is 8 over the change in x. Negative 2 subtract nothing is still negative 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4, but it's a positive divided by a negative minus negative, even negative 4 as our gradient. We jump along because this one shouldn't take us too long. Um, again, just be careful with your negative numbers, mixing them up. When we start getting the nastier questions, let's try and pick one that's going to be awkward. They don't really give us nice, nice. That's not too bad. It's the exact same skills as we did last time, so I'm going to jump straight on. So that's your first three videos, and I recommend you do them in numerical order, 200, 201, and then 202. Um, now we're going to look at putting some of those skills um, into practice. We're going to move on to building up our skills to draw the graphs themselves. Right, uh, so your fourth video that we're setting you this week is video 206, which is straight line graphs one. Um, literally just getting you to complete the tables. Um, if you got your head in the game, this isn't really a new skill. This is just substitution again. So if you, if you can substitute into an algebraic expression, you can do this one very, very easily. So let's start off with a very, very simple question. Uh, it's giving us a table. It says, use the table to work out the values of A, B, C, and D. And the table that we're going to get, 
x, where x is minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. Nice pre-prepared work here, sir. 2, that's a, 2, b, c. What have I missed here? 2. Oh, you wrote that there. Lovely work, sir, lovely work. Right, so y equals 2x plus 4, pre-prepared, eh? Minus 2, a, 2, b, c, and d. So we have been asked to find, uh, where is it, lovely. We've been asked to find ourselves a, b, c, and d from this horrifically drawn table. It's just substitution. Um, you may see these tables on an exam more commonly transposed horizontally, so not vertical. You'll basically get the same table, but it'll look like this. X, and then underneath they'll put Y equals X, uh, 2X plus 4, and you'll have a table that kind of goes like this. Minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. And they'll give you, they've given us minus 3. When X is minus 3, Y equals minus 2. When x is minus 1, y equals 2. And it'll just look like that on an exam. So be more prepared to see it horizontally. Um, it's dead simple. And what I always tell my students is, because we have this lovely ability, no matter how academically gifted we may or may not be, to make mistakes with negative numbers, and we're going to have to mess around with negative numbers here, always start from the highest positive number and work backwards. You will see a pattern. And, it, and, and that's all maths is, is spotting patterns. So... Uh, on this one, then, we're going to substitute when x equals 3 into this uh, e expression, into the equation, even. 2 times x. Well, x is now 3. So that's 2 times 3 is 6. Add the 4. 10. Go backwards. 2 times 2 is 4. Add 4 is 8. Keep going. When x is 1, 2 times 1 is 2. Add 4 is 6. Hopefully, you can spot the patterns here. It's going down in twos as I go right to left. So that's going to be a four. I can keep going. I know that's going to be a zero. And it just saves you that time. This, it, as, as, as we are going up, it's going up in twos. And there's an important part of this equation that tells me that. Okay. Two is the gradient. The gradient of this equation is two. Therefore, our y values, like we said a few minutes ago, the gradient tells us how much we are going up the y-axis for every one unit we go to the right uh, in our x-axis. So that's the simple question here. Does it get any more difficult? Yeah, it can do when we get to something like that. Okay, so let's put this to the side and we'll kind of keep drawing from here. So if we're looking at question five examples and it's going to start messing us up by giving us a table Again, x, y equals 1 minus 2x, and we get minus 3 again, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and we're stopping there, and it's saying that when x is minus 3, y is going to be 7, uh, when x is 0, y is 1, and we've got to fill in the rest. As I say, always try and start from your highest positive value of x, and we'll work our way backwards, but we do be careful. This time, Bidmus really does come into play. This means 1 minus whatever 2 times x is. So Bidmus here, you've got to work out your multiplication before you can do the subtraction. If x is 2, you've got 2 times 2, which is 4. 1 minus 4 minus 3. Keep going back now. When x is 1, 2 times 1 is 2. 1 minus 2 minus 1. We've already got something here. Maybe we've not spotted the pattern. Maybe we have. Let's fire it in anyway. When x is negative 1, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. 1 subtract negative 2. Remember, there it is again. That subtraction of negatives is an addition. 1 add 2 is 1. And hopefully you can see what's going on here. No, it's not. Idiot. <laughs> uh, long day. 1 subtract negative 2 is 3, obviously. Um, and hopefully we can see the pattern. We're going from minus 3 to minus 1 to 1 to 3. We are As we go up this table, we are adding 2 each time. So we can tell that that one's going to be 5. 
double check it if you want to, specifically if you've just made a mistake on your camera, sir. Two times my uh, two times negative two is negative four. One subtract negative four is the same as one add four, hence five. Uh, scrolling along then, does it get any worse than that? It's just different ways of writing it round. It's subtraction to negatives. If I can make one whilst babbling on a video, so can you. So do double check your work. You do get those two chances on Hegate. Finally then, uh, we have video 207, which is straight line graphs. So drop that. Let's get rid of that for now. And let's flip this over, give ourselves a fresh page. Um, straight line graphs, learn how to identify the gradient and y-intercept from the equation of a line. This is a really, really important skill because it will make drawing graphs massively, massively easier for you. As I said earlier, we call the gradient M. All straight line graphs can be written, so this is video 207, all straight line graphs can be written in the form Y equals, and we say MX, some gradient of X plus C. So a couple of things to start off. We already know that M here is called the gradient. Okay, the, and that tells us essentially what times tables, what sequence is this, is this graph's coordinates linked to? How, what are we going up uh, for every one across? The, the higher the magnitude of this number, the steeper the graph's going to be. You can have this, it can be a decimal, it can be fractional, of course. Um, and that if you get a fractional one, half X would mean that for every one across, you're only going half a square up or half a unit on your, on your axes. If this was 10, y equals 10x, it would mean for every one across, you would go 10 up. It would be a significantly steeper graph. It can go all the way to infinity. It can be negative. If this was minus 3, uh, it, y equals minus 3x, it would mean that for every one across, one to the right, we're going 3 down. So this thing then here, c, is what we call the intercept. And the reason it's called the intercept is what happens when x is 0, well, it doesn't matter what your gradient is at that point. If you're multiplying something by zero, it's going to be zero. So whatever this number is, C is a constant. So that tells you when X is zero, Y will equal whatever this constant is. So if we look at some of these examples here, then um, work out M and C for the line Y equals X minus six. Remember in algebra, if you just see a letter on its own, it means we have one of it. We don't write it because we're mathematicians. We can afford to be lazy. So there is an invisible one here. Uh, so the gradient, M, is 1. If X is 0, well, that means Y equals 6. Uh, y equals minus 6. So our intercept here is minus 6. That means that there would be a coordinate 0 minus 6 on this graph. And even though we've not got to the stage where we're drawing graphs at the moment, this is incredibly helpful because it means that's the first coordinate you're going to plot. 0 minus 6. When x is 0, y will be minus 6. Why is that important? Well, once you've plotted that coordinate, you've just said that the gradient is 1. And if we understand that the gradient is for every 1 across, you can go 1 up, well, then you could easily sketch that graph now. 0 minus 6, you just go 1 across and 1 up. And you'd be at 1 minus 5. You could go 1 across from there and 1 up. And you'd be at 2 minus 4 and so on and so forth. You'd be able to easily sketch or plot that graph. Let's get on to something a bit more potentially difficult then. Uh, let's throw it up. Uh, there you go. A nice simple-ish one. Y equals 2X plus 1. Very, very simple stuff. The thing that's with the X, that's your gradient. So M, your gradient is 2. Your intercept, C, is plus 1, or 1. It can be negative. Both of them can be negative and fractional, as I say. So if we go to question 7 here, and we get Y equals 6 minus X. Similarity with this first one that we went through here. Careful. The mathematical operation belongs to the term after it. So our gradient is still the number, the coefficient of X. And there's that invisible 1 again. So our m value here is minus, because that belongs to this term, minus 1. Our constant is positive 6. Okay, just because they're the other way around, don't let yourself get confused on that. Let's go right to the last one then. Uh, oh, that's a nice one there. So y equals 4 minus 5x. You've got a gradient of minus 5. 
and an intercept of four. And that should be really, really simple. Uh, if you can power through these ones this week, uh, we will be having a live lesson the following week where we will go through actual plotting the graphs. And this should give you a, quite a lot of the key core skills to do that, um, particularly this bit. Do watch the videos on Hegarty, please. Um, they are there for a reason. Uh, there's a lot of time and care being put into those videos, and it does help you out massively. And there's a very high correlation between those of you that are watching the videos and getting 100% on these quizzes. Uh, appreciate your time. Hope you guys are well, and we'll catch you next week.